Elon, if you are listening, restore James O'Keefe's Twitter account, restore Project Veritas. They are some of the most important investigative journalism reports that we have seen in our country. And Twitter has systemically stifled them. And it, well, <laughs> given what they report, it, it makes sense why Twitter is threatened. How do the board and Mr. Musk plan on dealing with a mass exodus, considering the acquisition is by a person with questionable ethics? The question of attrition, um, you know, as Parag stated, you know, uh, one of the themes of today is continuity um, and ensuring that Parag and this leadership team continues to operate the business successfully on behalf of our users, on behalf of our customers. Um, and that has obviously been a big topic of discussion at the board. And as I mentioned, an area that uh, is important to Elon Musk as well, because of the importance of Twitter as a service. With no board in place, who will keep Elon accountable and how? Elon made it clear in public that a large part of the reason he bought the platform was because of our moderation policies and disagreements in how we deal with health. This puts Twitter service and trust and safety, as well as anybody who cares about health on the platform, in a very difficult position. Twitter service, the role of our policies, and the capabilities we've built around content moderation are fundamental to keeping Twitter safe and growing. I believe that there is a lot of work we have to do to continue making that better. Sometimes that means more thoughtful moderation. Sometimes that means making things simpler. Sometimes that means changing product incentives to be able to solve problems through products sometimes instead of policies. During the last All Hands, you said that you trust Elon Musk. The correct quote was, we trust him. So who is we? And talking to Elon, what made you trust him? And based on the conversation I had with him uh, when we were excited to have him join our board, that was because as a major shareholder and an opinionated user, we wanted that voice in our boardroom so that we could learn. Is there an updated understanding on what free speech means? The question behind the question here, which is where might Twitter's product go? So that woman who was reading the questions did not invent the questions. Full disclosure here, she was reading the questions. She's the chief moderation officer. Her name's Leslie Berland. And she was reading the questions submitted by Twitter employees. So just, just FYI, I know there was some there was some debate over this online, but that's the fact of the matter. So she was asked about a mass exodus, this idea that Twitter employees are going to quit. And listen, that probably is going to happen. There are going to be leftists who work at Twitter who are going to leave. And if they if they can't stand working for Twitter simply because Elon Musk is in charge of it and because it's embracing free speech, then I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Like, go find a new job at a woke company. Uh, maybe Disney's hiring. <laughs> um, the, the, the significant thing, though, from this video is the question about the trust and safety uh, department at Twitter. The trust and safety department, this, this individual who works for Twitter said, is now in a difficult position based on how we deal with health. So this relates to all their censorship of COVID-19. And um, this is exactly what we want to happen. We want the trust and safety, the so-called trust and safety department, we want it to be abolished. We don't want there to be a trust and safety department because that is a, a, a an Orwellian euphemism for censoring censoring anything that the left doesn't want. They claim it's misinformation, but really it just counters what Fauci is telling you. Um, it's not really about health. It's it's actually about politics. So um, I, for one, simply can't wait for Elon to just come in and smash that with a giant hammer. Cannot, cannot wait the, the best question, though, is this one. Is there an updated understanding of what free speech means? So, no, there's not. There's not an updated understanding of what free speech means. Free speech means as long as you are uh, within the boundaries of the U.S. Constitution or United States law regarding speech, then that's it. The idea of the First Amendment isn't to keep people safe, it, meaning it isn't to, not, I'm not talking about physically safe, I'm talking about their feelings. It isn't to keep people's feelings safe. It's not to make sure that their, their tender feelings aren't offended or that they don't hear something that they, they don't like or don't want to hear. No, no. The First Amendment codifies protection for free speech based on the idea that there are going to be people who say things that offend you who say things that might even hurt your feelings, who say things that you disagree with and you don't want to hear. That's the purpose of the First Amendment. If we all said things that people just agreed with, if there was no disagreement, we wouldn't have any need to codify protection for free speech. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a debate whatsoever. So no, there's not an updated understanding of what free speech means. Free speech is just free speech. It's a really good thing. 